by seeing making the training, everything just started warming up in, uh, in, in love potency, you could say. Just natural love potency, you know, just the natural love of being a human being. A human being relaxing as she is. A human being, with you no know, making no effort to adjust, change, edit myself on a kind of constant mission to sort of fix myself up to be, a, be better or subtly criticizing, you know, criticizing myself and others. And, and in just in allowing myself to just rest more and more and, like you heard, rely on open intelligence, just seeing that this loving warmth and openness was more obvious <coughs> within my experience, whatever it is. Just this a glowing, a growing glowing <laughs> of my true nature. And that's available to all of us in this instant right here. And it's not about changing how we think and feel. This is revolutionary. <laughs> And now I'd been so obsessed by my thoughts and emotions. It's what I had just learned to focus on in order to grade my life satisfaction, how I was doing, what I thought of other people, what I thought they thought of me, um, you know, which is all a very big part of the picture of like, am I doing all right in life? Am I succeeding? You know, in the morning checking, how do I feel? Am I sad? Am I a bit depressed? Am I stressed? Or you know, am I happy? You know, it was just like, an, like we know there's an ever-changing display of, um, of how we're feeling every day or how we may describe that we're feeling. And so that's just generally how I lived life and really thought it was completely normal because <laughs> um, that's what everyone's doing. So I just rolled along in that way, doing the best I could and learned along the way that it was good to have more of the positive um, feelings and thoughts and um, situations and, and less of the negative ones. So that was just the general life mission. And I was quite successful at it, you know. I was quite good at putting myself in situations that made me feel good, where, I, you know, if I started to feel uncomfortable, I'd generally remove myself, or if it was with people who I found sort of too negative or they pushed my buttons, it would be like, hmm, you're not really my people, so I'm just going to kind of not be here because this all feels quite uncomfortable. And, um, and so, yeah, just took that to be really normal. And then coming into an open meeting like this 11 years ago, coming to the Balance You training and hearing something else, something else about me, something else about reality, something about my mind that I was not aware of or not aware that I could utilize and rely on moment by moment. That actually it's the, the true nature of my mind is completely <coughs> at ease. It's already relaxed, already open, and is available in every single moment. And open intelligence, as you heard in the introduction, that is shining right now, the very basis of your mind, your power to know what knows your next thought, what's looking through your eyes, what's hearing these words. This fundamental intelligence that's always on and always available and um, includes all our data streams, all our thoughts and emotions, just equally perceiving everything. Do you see that? Like in any one moment, your thoughts, they rise, they resolve, they could be nice ones, they could be bad ones. And open intelligence remains, the power to know. Just clear, open, available in every single moment. And so it was like getting to know the true context of my mind, the reality of my mind, the reality of my life. And then I was given the practice of short moments, so for short moments to recognize open intelligence. Just like that, a short moment of open intelligence. And just to repeat that again and again until open intelligence is continuously obvious all the time. And we can test that out. You can test it out right now, whatever your thought or emotion is, whatever's arising, just to check is open intelligence present? Is there an openness of mind present? Your power to know. And um, I, I saw getting to know this um, started to open up a way of relating to myself and my experience and life that wasn't available before. I discovered there was a stability. Um, there was an availability in life 
I, I was able to use short moments and allow what I had taken to be troubling thoughts and emotions just to be as they are. And when I did that, I saw that they, they arose and vanished naturally, like the flight path of a bird in the sky or like a line drawn in water. You know, vividly there, like a rainbow in space, but then fading back into space back into the basic space of everything. And so it is with all our perceptions, all our data streams. What can we actually hold on to? However much we may love something, that perception too is also naturally resolving moment by moment. And, um, and also it's same with the negative ones. And this was an amazing insight for me because I'd been putting so much effort into changing my negative thoughts and emotions. And then I saw that they were naturally self-releasing. And uh, I didn't need to do that at all. So it opened up this uh, confidence and assurance in my experience to be in situations, especially situations which I'd always run away from. And there were quite a few, um, whether it would be like what I thought I was capable of or in friendships or relationships. And, um, you know, there would always be sort of twinkling and negativity arising. And I would think there would be something wrong. So then having the training, having the balance view training, having this practice to apply, just started to open life up in an amazing way, where there was this stability, there was this confidence and assurance to be in life, to relate to myself, to get to know myself as I really am, to get to know my mind as it really is, and in that way be able to much, like, relate to others in a very open-hearted way that I wasn't able to before. So this... Um, this stability of open intelligence is available to all of us in every single moment. And what the Balanced View Training offers is teaching and support to train this up, you know, to make this obvious to us. Something that, you know, was just overlooked in my experience. I'd never received an education. I'd never received an introduction to open intelligence. So I just lived along in a way that I thought was the best I could. And, um, and so in, in taking up the, the training and gaining confidence in open intelligence, you know, short moment by short moment, day by day, situation by situation, testing out and seeing how it is, and then taking part in the 12 empowerments training and really seeing there, taking such a clear look at my life and really seeing there that all the basis of all of those experiences, all of those data streams is open intelligence. And I have a choice, I have a powerful choice in how I relate. And really within that, you know, we, can, we have power, we have the power to be of benefit in every moment, that we're never a victim to our mind, we're never a victim to our data streams. And this was very exciting to discover, you know, that there's a, that really that freedom that I'd always looked for to love fully, to relate fully was available in every single moment. The best thing is we don't need to change any of our data. We don't need to change any of our data streams. That's such a revelation. You know, that I'd always been looking for happiness in positive data. <laughs> I just, that's all I thought, it, I, I was obsessed. I thought that's the only place it is. And to just allow everything to be as it is and to rely on open intelligence and to discover this ease of being, discover that there's well-being, there's well-being and stability present, like true happiness present in every moment, not in a certain state. And so then I can just enjoy everything more, like enjoy the things I really love, the people I really love even more, you know, it's, um, it's such an empowerment, it's such an empowerment, not being sort of locked into this obsession about my thoughts and emotions, but just totally open to life, totally able to relate in the way I love and wish to. And, um, and totally prepared for anything that can come up in life, because we all know anything can come up. There'll be times where of great challenges, you know, great challenges for ourselves, for those we love, society, the world, and then knowing, having a stable ground, knowing what we can rely on and being completely supported in that. You know, regardless of what is arising for us, being able to relate powerfully, open-heartedly, lovingly, with clarity, and wisdom, this is, this is our capacity as human beings, and this is what we really want to know about ourselves. 
if we're basing our lives just on only on the data, now what is important is it's not about ignoring our data. Okay, it's not about open intelligence as a thing over here and data over here. Open intelligence and data are inseparable, like the color blue in the sky or like the breeze in the air. So it's, you know, when we rest as open intelligence and we allow everything to be as it is, we are informing ourselves in a new way. And this is what I saw. Rather than jumping from thought to thought, data to data, it's like taking everything in all at once <laughs> and seeing what will be of benefit to all. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's our fundamental powerful intelligence that's always on. It's what the thoughts are. It's what knows the thoughts. It's what's pervading everything. So as we rest mind and body, we align ourselves with open intelligence. And the data streams, they also inform us in a new way as open intelligence. So there's nothing we need to get rid of and definitely nothing to work out.